city of our God, he whose word cannot be broken, form thee for his own abode, on the rock of ages founded, what can shake the sure repose, with salvation's walls surrounded, thou mayest smile at all thy foes. See the streams of living waters bringing from eternal love will supply thy sons and daughters and all fear of want removed. Who can fail when such a river ever flows the thirst to swage? Grace which like the Lord the giver never fails from age to age. Round each habitation hovering, see the cloud and fire appear. For a glory and a covering, showing that the Lord is near, thus deriving from their banner, light by night and shade by day, safe they feed upon the manna which He gives them when they pray. Blessed inhabitants of Zion, washed in the Redeemer's blood, Jesus, whom their souls rely on, make them kings and priests to God. This His love His people raises, over cell to reign as kings, and as priests His solemn praises, each for thankful offering brings. Savior, if of Zion City, I through grace a member am, let the world be right or pity, I will glory in thy name, fading is the worldling's pleasure, all is boasted pomp and show, solid joys and lasting treasures, none but Zion's children know. Amen. Good singing. It's good to see you here today. Uh, now, let's uh, I'll just make a general announcement. We want to continue to pray for our church family. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of folks that are, some folks that are not here because they're concerned about being here again this week. But uh, we do have a lot of people who are sick and uh, a number of people uh, who, you know, have had COVID or have COVID. And uh, so you pray for them. Um, they're they're. What I know, most everybody is working through it and, and doing okay. Um, but, you know, it's definitely something we want to just hold them up in prayer and uh, just pray for the Lord's protection for them and their guidance. And of course, a lot of them are uh, some of our seniors. Um, so just make sure you pray for them regularly. I know they would appreciate it and they'd be praying for you if you had it uh, or if I had it. So uh, let's uh, just make sure we do that and uh, just thankful that... Uh, yeah, you know, we can be here this morning. It's good to see you here this morning. Brother Dave, will you lead us in prayer? Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Take your hymn books. Go up to hymn number three. Break in the front of the book. Hymn number three. Praise the Savior, ye who know him.
Praise the Savior, ye who know Him, who can tell how much we owe Him. Gladly let us render to Him all we are and have. Jesus is the name that charms us. He for conflict fits and arms us. Nothing moves and nothing harms us while we trust in Him. Trust in Him, ye saints forever. He is faithful, changing never. Neither force nor God can sever those He loves from Him. Keep us, Lord, O oh, keep us cleaving to thyself and still believing till the hour of our receiving promised joys with thee. Then we shall be where we would be, then we shall be what we should be. Things are not now, nor could be, some shall be our own. Amen. My favorite verse of that is verse number three. It says, trust him, you saints, forever. He is faithful, changing never. I'm thankful we serve a God that is never changing. And uh, praise the Lord for that. And then the, the last part of that uh, verse, verse number three, neither force nor, nor guile can sever those he loves from him. You know, we get saved. There's nothing that can take you out of God's hand. And that should just be, and, and that includes ourselves, by the way. Some people believe that you can do, you know, some sin, some type of thing that somehow you're able to lose your salvation. Yet the Bible is very clear and, uh, you know, there's nothing can take us out of God's hands when we're saved. And uh, I'm thankful for it this morning, thankful for that song this morning. Let's uh, just go over a few announcements. Um, you know, Senior Saints, we're going to probably have a Senior Saints prayer meeting this week, 10 o'clock in the sanctuary here. Uh, the November Call to Glory devotionals and the latest Sword of the Lords are on the hall table back there. So please pick those up and, and be prepared for that. Uh, we'll probably plan on having our quarterly business meeting this week, uh, but we'll let you know for sure. But we did put it in there. Uh, we are going to be new in poinsettias again for the uh, auditorium to decorate for Christmas. Uh, so there'll be a sign-up sheet next week for that. Ladies, uh, notice on the uh, ladies' meeting for this month, it is going to be moved to the third Tuesday, the 16th. Um, so please note the date change there. Uh, and you guys are going to complete chapter number one and then uh, move on back to chapter number four. Uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to be moving our uh, Thanksgiving service to Tuesday night, our midweek service, as we normally do and uh, having our dinner for that. And then uh, Christmas decorating upcoming. Now, I'm never, uh, I'm never disappointed when I have to read about Christmas decorating or think about that because I rather enjoy it. But for some of you, you may go, oh, Christmas decorating. But uh, I rather enjoy it, so it's a pleasant announcement. But uh, anyway, Christmas decorating is going to be uh, here uh, sooner than we think. Uh, Wednesday the 24th, Saturday the 27th. Uh, begin around 10 o'clock both days there. And uh, we'll have a sign-up sheet we'll send around as well for that. We'll take your hymn books one more time. Let's go to hymn number 688. Oh, that will be glory. Hymn number 688. Let's go ahead and stand this morning as we sing. When all my labors and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the dear Lord I That will be glory, be glory for me. When by 
by the gift of His infinite grace. I am accorded in heaven a place just to be there and to look on His face. Will through the ages be glory for me? Oh, that will be I shall look on his face that will be glory, be glory for me. Friends will be there, I have loved long ago. Joy like a river around me will flow, yet just a smile from my Savior I know. I shall look on his face that will be glory be glory for me amen good singing watch you get and be seated and this morning we get the opportunity to have brother scott deku come and uh, preach for us appreciate him and his family and uh, they're kind of they're kind of here waiting to get back to Fiji at some point. And a few changes since uh, they were here last time. They added a little one. And uh, so we're going to have Brother Scott come on up and preach for us. Why don't you just give us a little update on uh, you know, what you're doing and how the family's doing and all those kinds of things as well, Brother. Come on up. Good morning, everyone. That's good. I don't know about you, but I'm not a morning person, so I got to work at it a little bit. I got to do jumping jacks or something, right? Well, just go ahead and turn your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. It's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be saved. It's a blessing to serve the Lord. And uh, it's a blessing... Uh, to be at your church. I know we've been praying for you all and uh, praying for uh, many of you have been sick and of course praying as you continue to move forward for the Lord. And as Brother Brian said, we do have number seven. So uh, the Lord blessed us with, uh, her name is Mary Lynn Jubilee on May 13th. And um, we thought she was going to come quick at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, things started to, to move in the direction that they are supposed to move. And my wife and I were like, well, what do we do with all the kids? So we sent them to school and then we um, found out places for them to go to after school. Some of the other families in the church. And uh, we thought, well, you know, she's going to come quick because number six and number seven have all come quick. And it didn't happen that way. It's eight o'clock at night. She still hasn't come yet. Twelve hours of this thing and. She decided to wait and wait, and she finally came at 8 o'clock at night. So praise the Lord um, for a uh, safe uh, delivery, and baby's doing well, mother's doing well. My wife had COVID uh, about a week before she gave birth. She just barely got over it. So we thank the Lord that, um, you know, she got over that. I had COVID about the same time she did, and uh, we both were. I went to the ER on Friday, and she came back and picked me up. Uh, I was in the ER all Friday night, and then uh, I took her to the ER on Sunday for, for, the, for COVID. So I was sick, she was sick, we were doing tag team. All right, now you're it. All right, now you're it. Uh, but so <laughs> the Lord brought us through it all. Amen? And of course, I have uh, my number one son, who's got my name, Scott Deku. Scott Jeffrey Deku is with me, and he keeps me in line. He says, Dad, you told that joke before, or Dad, you said that before, or Dad, you forgot this, and... So it's kind of what my, I did to my dad, right? He would travel and I would travel with my dad. So uh, I got my oldest here. He'll be 13 in December. That's hard to believe. So I got an almost 13-year-old and a five-month-old girl. 
uh, but he likes being a big brother. Uh, he, he likes to uh, help mom out, and he's a big help, and I'm thankful for him. And he's already starting about talking about driving. I said, whoa. I said, one step at a time. Amen. He's talking about shaving and driving and getting married and having his own truck and all these things. I said, just hold on a minute. Amen. Well, uh, we just want to also say uh, thank you for praying for, of course, Fiji. They had COVID from April uh, to about this month. They were, you know, they had 60,000 cases. But up until April of this year, they only had 200. So from April until now, they, of course, spread very quickly, but now it's dwindling down. They've had over, I think, 700 deaths in the country. But, of course, everyone is bad, but it could have been much worse. Uh, so we're thankful for that. Uh, our people have, and all the other churches, have not had church until uh, the beginning of this month. So from basically May until the beginning of this month, now they're slowly having churches again. Our church is Anchor Baptist Church, and we started that in 2017. And the Lord provided a piece of property for us, and we're looking forward to seeing the Lord progress on that. But if you would pray for Jerome, he's the young man and his wife that's filling in, especially for me while we're away, and he's doing a great job. So I'm excited about uh, just what the Lord has done in his life and what the Lord will continue to do. Uh, you know, I remember when I first uh, witnessed to him and first invited him to come, he made all these excuses. And uh, he told me, he goes, when I, I knew when I first started coming to church and I first got saved, he goes, I knew my commitment was lacking. He said, I just kind of came and I just kind of was there. But, you know, the truth is, is now God has really worked in his heart. And uh, he's willing to step out by faith and serve God uh, full time. So we're excited about uh, what God is doing. You know, the truth is, is we're getting closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, our time is short and his coming is soon. Uh, we have to remember those things. Amen? Amen. If you're in Proverbs chapter number 12, would you say amen? amen? I want to go ahead and read in Proverbs chapter 12. I'm also going to read in Psalms chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 12, I'm going to read from verse number 7. The Bible says, If ye endure chastening, God deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Let's go ahead and pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be in church, the opportunity to be in a free country, the opportunity to uh, look into your word, Lord. We truly need your word. Lord, I just thank you so much that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, that we do have eternal life. In the midst of the, the struggles of life, the troubles of life, the battles of life, the situations that we experience, Lord, we know that you're with us. You never leave us nor forsake us. Truly, Lord, we are weak and truly you are strong. And Lord, you are our great high tower and you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. May your name be glorified. May our thoughts and minds and hearts be centered on you. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, every time I open the word of God, I sure do feel unworthy. Amen. I feel as if, who am I? But the truth is, it's not me today. It's the word of God that we need to hear from. We need to hear from God's word. All I am today is a sinner saved by grace. Tell you a story about a famous songwriter and actor. His name was Hoagland Howard Carmichael. He was an actor one day, decided to pick up golf. He arranged lessons with an instructor in his first lesson, he patiently learned the basics of golf. He learned how to hold the club. He learned how to stand. He learned how to swing. And so the instructor said, well, I think you're ready to go out on your first time around the course. 
So the ball was teed up. He stepped up and he swung. The ball went down the fair lane and it continued to go onto the green and it dropped right in the hole. Mr. Carmichael picked up that club and threw it to the instructor and he said, I think I got it. I think I learned. I think you're a good instructor. Amen. Somebody else wrote this in an article. He said, I've learned that you cannot make someone you love. You cannot make someone love you. All you can do is be someone who can be loved. The rest is up to you. I've learned that no matter how much I care, some people just don't care about you. I've learned that it takes years to build up trust and only seconds to destroy it. I've learned that it's not what you have in your life, but who you have in your life that counts. I've learned that you can get by on charm for about 15 minutes, and after that, you better know something. I've learned that you shouldn't compare yourself to the, the best others can do, but to the best you can do. Can I ask you today, what have you learned? You know what? Last year, I hit a milestone. I hit the big four zero. Boy, it comes fast, you know. But I, I haven't, I, you know, my kids keep saying, Dad, you're getting old. Dad, you can't catch us. Dad, you can't beat us up. I can still do that. Amen. I can still catch them. I can still beat them up. But, you know, as I look at a, a point in life, as all of us do, and as we look at the experiences, the circumstances, the challenges, the tribulations, as we live in a sin-cursed world, and we are sinners, and we face God's wrath upon us, or we go through an attack, or we go through an attesting, we'll be reminded this morning that we have three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And the flesh, the Bible tells us, that is in me dwelleth no good thing. Brother Brian was talking about this morning in Sunday school, how sometimes we don't want to get out of bed. We don't want to go to church. We don't want to follow God. We want to do what we want to do. That's the flesh. But we're to die to self. We're to be crucified with Christ. How about the devil? The Bible tells us we're to resist the devil. Amen? And he says he will flee from us. How about the world? We're to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Amen? But many of you could probably get up here or I could talk to you today and you could sit down and take page after page after page and minute after minute and say, listen, I want to tell you some things that I've learned. Amen? Look back, look back in Hebrews if you would. Hebrews chapter 12, as we just read. Of course, this passage is talking about chastening. How the Lord, verse 6, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? I asked my kids, I said, what did you learn today in school? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what? You didn't learn any math or reading or spelling? No, I don't know. And I say this to them, I go, well, think about to a year ago. You've gotten a lot better in reading. They've gotten a lot better in spelling and, and, and history and science. And, and for a second, the light comes on. Ding! Oh, yeah. My, my kids, I mean, I've just seen them progress from, of course, being babies to now they want to drive. Well, whew, I'm in trouble, amen? I need God's help. But you know, if you sit back at your life in a minute and look what it says here. It says in verse 11, it says, Now chasing of the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, notice this word, afterward. It yieldeth a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. I tell you, there's been time as being a missionary or just living life. Or I wanted to take the towel and throw it in and say, I'm done. I'm done doing this. I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired of everyday life. Sometimes it seems like it's one thing after another. It's like bad news, bad news, bad news. As you read it uh, with the book of Job and all that he experienced, losing his family, losing his wealth. And his wife says, curse God and die. And I'm not Job, but sometimes I feel like I want to give up. But what does it say? It says, nevertheless, afterward. 
in the moment of it all. I'm like, what is going on? If I don't know what it is, I'm not saying it's all chastening, but what if it is chastening, God, what are you trying to teach me in this moment, in this chastening, in this chastisement, in this punishment, in this trial, perhaps, or tribulation? Look, it says there again in verse 10, for he for our, what? Profit. You know, my dad used to apply the board of correction to the seat of learning. And he said, son, I love you. And I said, what? I don't get it, dad. You love me? You care about me? And I know my son's been there, where I was. Dad, I don't get it. Dad, I don't understand why, why you were correcting me. It was for my good. Right. It was for my good. It was for my profits. But in that time and in that moment, I'm like, I don't get it. But afterwards, I say, I get it. When I was sitting where my son was at, I'm like, I don't get it. But now, as I'm 41 years old, I go, okay, I get it. Amen. And you know what I do? Say, thank God for my father. And as an adult, do I say, okay, God, I don't get why I went through that. And God, I don't I understand why you allowed that. But thank you. Thank you. I didn't understand it then, but I see it differently now. And I have to understand that God knows everything. And God makes no mistakes. And he is God. Amen. That doesn't change. Can I say to this morning that we're all in the school of life? We have a teacher, and it's God. He's God. And we have a textbook. It's the preserved, inspired Word of God yeah. that liveth and abideth forever. That doesn't change. He never changes. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. We see the circumstances of life changing. We see the seasons of life. We see the world around us. But God never changes. What is the purpose of the learning in the Christian life? Galatians 4.19 says, My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Until Christ be formed in you. Can I understand this morning as Job went through all the situations in life, as uh, Satan, of course, came along to ask God's permission to bring these things upon him. And after it all, after Job experienced it all, and after his, his so-called friends gave him their advice, what does Job say in Job 42, verse 5 and 6? He says, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. He says, but now mine eye seeth thee. You know what he's saying there? But now, God, I see you like never before. I see you as being real. I see you as being true. Even though I experienced all this and I would never have, have uh, chosen it. What does he say in Job 23, verse 10? He says, neither have I gone back from the command of his lips. I, I'm sorry, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth. As gold. Wow. It talks about in Romans about glorying in our tribulations. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. But to be honest with you. There's times where I ain't rejoicing. I'm complaining. I'm murmuring. I'm complaining. Dear God I'm serving you. And you let this happen. I'm trying to raise my family. And you let this happen. What in the world. What does it say? Nevertheless, afterward, for our profits. Amen? Amen? We're in God's school of learning. We have challenges, afflictions, troubles, criticisms, problems, pain, trials, you name it. Let's talk about a few things by introduction as we talk about learning. The school. Number one, every Christian is enrolled in the school. Amen. Automatically. True, true. Your name's on there. Your name's on the roll. Why am I interested in that kind of stuff? Guess what? Ain't got no choice. Amen? Right. Dad, I, Mom, I'm not going to school today. I'm not interested in that kind of learning. Right, you're going. Get ready. 
get, get your bags ready. Get your bag. You're going. You're in the school. Of course, in Hebrews 12, 8, it says, But ye with, but without chastisement, wherever all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Can I say, as children of God, He is working in my life to make me what He wants me to be. It's working in my life. I'm in the school. And I, I don't realize it, but it's for my learning. Right. It's for my growth. It's for me to be like Christ. For me to see God like I've never seen Him before. Not only that, we never stop learning. Never stop learning. It's amazing to hold that baby for the first time and the baby opens the eyes, your, her eyes at you and, and looks at you for the first time and you kind of go, wow. It's a humbling experience. And then uh, it's really cute. Of course, Mary, she's starting to smile and laugh and giggle. And that's always fun uh, to just enjoy just the growth in them. And of course, uh, Scott Jeffrey was born in Altoona. What year were you born? 2008. My wife's not here to help me, so I, I need help, amen? 2008, I held my first child, Scott Jeffrey. Hold, held him there. My grandparents were still living at that time. And my, my in-laws drove from New Jersey. They, they hit a deer on the way over, but uh, they still made it, amen? And here he is, his growth, his learning. He's asking me questions about the Bible now, about life. It's amazing. Bible tells us in Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, which he has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of what? Jesus Christ. God never stops working. Amen? When you graduate school, you say, oh, I'm done. No more learning. That doesn't work that way. You still learn from the day you were born to the day you're in. You're still learning physically. You're still learning spiritually. Number three. Our learning is based upon our attitude. Yeah. A lot of times a teacher will write on the report card, your son is doing well in school, but could do better if he had a better attitude. You know, there's work to do. There's homework to do. There's studying to do. There's projects to do. In a regular school, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to do that kind of thing. But you know what? It's for your learning. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to have to go through this situation in life. I don't want to get sick. How many would say, boy, I want to get sick. Amen. I want to go to the hospital. Or I want to have financial problems. I want to have family problems. Well, that's what I want. No, we would not choose it. But it's for our learning. But the question is, what's our attitude like? Hmm? How's our hearts? Is it full of pride? Full of complaining? Or do we have a bad attitude towards the things of God and towards the people of God and towards God's words? Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I remember one time a lady said to me, she said that your preaching was the best preaching I've ever heard in my entire life. And she said, I've heard a lot of preaching. Boy, my head got so big I couldn't walk out the door. Yeah, old flesh man loves to rear up. Woo, yeah, look at who you are. I'm nothing. I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace. Amen? That's all we are. How's my attitude? How's my heart? It's based upon my attitude of my heart. Is it right? Am I humble? Number four, the learning involves molding of lives. Molding of lives. I, I, you know, I think that teachers have a great responsibility because they're not just teaching, but they're molding lives building character and teaching other things like that. But not only teachers, but adults, parents, grandparents. We're not just teaching them the simple things of life of how to bake a cake or how to change oil or, or how to use a hammer or whatever, but to understand I'm molding lives, spiritually speaking. We've seen a lot of adults and parents forget the fact that you are molding a life just simply by being here today. You're making a statement by saying, God comes first. I believe that his word in his house comes first and he comes first in my life and I'm here today because of him. You make a statement by what you do and what you don't do. You know, I realized that I have seven children. I have 14 eyes watching me. What's dad do? 
What's dad not do? What's dad say? What's dad not say? Where does dad go? Where does he not go? What does the Bible tell us in Isaiah 64, verse 8? It says, but now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are of the clay, and thou art potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Well, the Apostle Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. That's it. Well, I am what I am by my own accomplishments. I've heard people say that. My house, my property, my family, it's all because of me. There again, pride goeth before destruction. In one day, in one moment, it could all be gone. What are you left with? Nothing. Real quick, look in uh, Psalms chapter 27. Psalms chapter 27. That was all the introduction, amen? That was just, that was just the appetizer. That was just wetting your appetite, amen? My, you know, every time you think about preaching, like, well, I got this message, I got this message, I, I'm praying about another one. I'm like, oh, okay. Let's just ask the Lord to use this one, Amen? So I'm going to title this message this morning. As after we read this, I'll tell you the title. Let's read Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing if I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore I order, offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. Because of mine enemies, deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, of course, this is the Word of God. This was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we know that there's 150 Psalms. But this Psalm, we believe that there's eight authors of the book of Psalms, human penmans. There's several that are unknown. But this one, we believe, is a Psalm of David. And we don't know his exact circumstances, that, particularly that he was going through as he wrote this Psalm. But as we read this Psalm, we see confidence in God. We see a great confidence in trusting God. But let's notice what he says in verse 11 again. He says, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Is that me today? Do I say, Lord, teach me. Lord, what are you teaching me? Lord, what are you showing me? Sometimes, you know, when I went to school, the teacher was teaching something. I'm like, what are you saying? This is foreign to me. I don't, teacher, I don't get it. Either you're a bad teacher or I'm a bad student. I don't know, but we're not connecting. No, I didn't say that. But, you know, sometimes you felt like that. But then after a while, it's kind of like the light bulbs went on. Click. Oh, okay. Now I get it. The word teach, of course, uh, is the word that means to point out as if aiming the finger. The dictionary also describes it as to instruct, to inform, to communicate to another the knowledge of that which he was before ignorant. Can we raise our hand today and say, I know everything? Of course not. But God does. Amen. 
I know tomorrow. Do you know next week? Do you know next year? Of course not. What's the Bible say? Boast not thyself of what? Tomorrow. But you know what? I believe there is great wisdom in sharing with one another. You know, I think we're guilty about talking everything about everything else but the things of God. Hey, did you hear we're doing this through our house and we're renovating this and I got a new car and I got a new job. And, and did you hear about the snow coming? And there's nothing wrong about talking about those things. But we need to talk about the Lord. We need to talk about what he's done for us. We need to talk about what we believe he's teaching us. But do we get down on our knees and we get down on our heart and say, Lord, teach me. But instead, we got everything going on in our minds. We're not willing to be taught. We're just full of complaining. We're just full of sorrow. It's all about me. Teach me, Lord. What does he say? Thy way. Teach me thy way. I think about Elijah who taught Elisha. I think about Moses who taught Joshua, like Christ who taught his disciples, like Paul who taught Timothy. You know, my parents have been my parents my entire life. And I've seen them go through a lot of things. But I've never seen them quit on God. I've never seen them say, well, this is a waste of time. Why would we ever do this? Never heard it. Never seen it. But I've seen the lessons that they've learned in life. And you know what? That has helped me. That has challenged me. That has encouraged me to keep on going. Amen? Amen. To not quit. Don't throw in the towel. But to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Number one, real quick this morning, is God is the reason I'm not afraid. We see a lot of Christians today, man, they're so full of fear. So full of everything. Oh, I'm afraid of this, and I'm afraid of this, and I'm afraid of that. Look what it says in verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Is it wrong to be afraid? No. It's a human reaction. You stand on top of like the hundredth floor of a building and look down and go, whoa. It's far down there. We're afraid of circumstances. We're afraid of the future. Oh, we're afraid of problems and people. But it's wrong when the fear stops us from serving God. And you know what? I was at that point. I was a senior in high school, and they asked me to give a five-minute testimony. And I said, no way. I ain't doing that. I went to Bible college, and I went to the jail ministry. And they said, well, you go with another man and just be the silent partner. I said, sure, I can do that. Well, one week, guess what? He didn't come. They said, you're preaching. I said, no, you guys don't understand. I don't preach. I pass out the psalm books. It's my job. They said, you're on, buddy. I said, whoa. So I got in there. There's about 12 prisoners in there. We're all sitting there. They're looking at me like, say something. So I did. And the Lord blessed. Amen. I said, wow, this is great. And it was my junior year of in Bible college, I surrender in the missions conference to serve the Lord as a missionary. But fear almost stopped me. I had a man come up to me. He said, you know what? I know God called him to be a missionary. He said, but I never went. He said, because I was too afraid. He said, I live with it every day. Are we letting fear stop us? Are we letting fear control us? You know, the problem is today is we're looking at all the circumstances around us and we're not looking to God's. Matthew 14, 30, it says, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. You know, 365 times we see in our Bible, fear not, fear not, fear not. 1 Timothy 1, 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Psalms 56, 3, it says, What time I am afraid I will trust in thee. Psalms 27, 3, as we just read. Psalms 3, 6 says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Remember, David faced Goliath, mighty Goliath, but he wasn't afraid. David was pursued by Saul, hated by Saul, Saul tried to kill him. He had the weight of the young nation and 
and then went to, of course, civil war with his son Absalom and all the things he faced because of the wrath of God with his sin with Bathsheba and killing of Uriah. All these things. But what does he say? He says, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? God's with me. I have confidence in God. What does the Bible tell us in Romans 8, 31? I love this verse. If God before us, if God before us, who shall be against us? God's on our side. God's with us. Who's going to be against us? Nobody. We're on the winning side this morning. Amen? We're on the winning side. If God before us, who can be against us? God was David's shining light in his salvation and his strength. He says in verse 3, Though though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though they come here, though the enemy comes around me, the host, a large number, shall not fear. In 2 Kings chapter number 6, we see Elisha and his servants. The Syrian uh, commander king said, hey, what's going on? How do they know where we're going? How do they know? Is there a spy among us? And one of his men said, oh, the prophet Elisha, he tells the king of Israel where we're going to be. So, of course, they chase him to Dotham in the middle of the night. The servant wakes up and he says, oh, no, they're all around us. And Elisha prays. He says, God, open his eyes. Elisha said to him, fear not. And he prays and God opens his eyes and he sees the chariots of fire surrounding them. May God open our eyes to not be afraid. Amen? To step forward and to move forward and to be bold for Christ. How can I not be afraid? Number one, because of God's power. God's power? Psalm 62, 11 says, Power belongeth unto God. Have I forgotten that God is all-powerful? That he could do the impossible? Isaiah 41, 10 says, Not only do I have God's power, but I have God's presence. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Look in Isaiah 43, if you would. You guys look like you want to turn your pages there. Isaiah 43, verse number 1. As you're turning your pages, I'll tell you in September, I'm sorry, February 2016, February 20th, there was a cyclone. We call them cyclones in Fiji coming towards our main island of Vitale. We got 300 islands, but we have 100 that are inhabited. And this hurricane called Cyclone Winston was headed right towards us. It hit Fiji with winds of 185 mile an hour. The largest one to ever hit Fiji. Now, I'll be honest with you. I was scared. <laughs> I knew it was big, and they kept saying it's going to come right across the middle of the island, but it actually went through the, the passageway between the two. There's an island here and an island here. They said it was going to hit right here, but it actually went in between the two. So where we were at, we didn't get the full brunt of it. My mom and dad were here in America. Paul and Wendy were an hour and a half away, and Josh was still here in America. And... Uh, it hit on a Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Power went out, it got dark, and the storm hit. For two or three days, we were getting ready, you know, getting water, getting batteries, getting food, boarding up the windows. I had a trampoline, took that thing down. When I was just tired, 7 o'clock, I took my washing machine, was out on the back porch, because my washing machine was on the back porch. I had to unhook it and bring it in. As soon as I did that, I remember hearing the freight train coming down the tracks. I was like, oh, wow. And it just blew. I mean, I felt this huge gust of wind. So I got in, got it done. Would you believe what my kids did for five hours? You know, what they did during the five hours of that storm? Of course, we only had four of them. They slept through the entire storm. They woke up the next morning. Where's the storm? I was gone. I mean, the wind was blowing. The, I mean, it was bang. We had the little crawl space door. It was going like this. It's just up and down. I mean, it was banging. The, I thought the roof fell off. Like, I didn't know. But this tree was hitting the side of it so loud. I called Paul, my brother. I said, you still alive, bro? He said, barely. We're still hanging on. He said, we're okay. But we're, I mean, we were mopping up water. The water was blowing in because we have louvers. 
And it was coming, my wife was two weeks from, from giving birth to number five, Emmy. Two weeks. And I thought, well, the hospital's there, but we ain't getting there. Let me check that emergency childbirth book again. <laughs> but you know what? We had God's presence. Amen? Look in Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now say, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. What's it say? Fear not. Amen? Amen. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 3, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're told that you have to bow down to that idol. If you don't bow down when the music plays, you're going to be thrown to the fiery furnace. Did they bow down? No. They were thrown in that fiery furnace. And the Bible says that when they were even thrown there by the men, that they, they were even hit by it and they were killed. But not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are God's presence. God's presence was with them. And the same God that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego served is the same God that we serve today. Have we gotten that or have we learned that? Have we learned that God, no matter what, I have your power, I have your presence. Not only that, but I have your protection. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Don't be afraid. God's in control. Amen? Amen? Another story about Scott Jeffrey. In the middle of the night in Fiji, my wife thought she heard him up getting a, a drink or going to the bathroom. It wasn't him. It was an uninvited guest. So she woke me up, and by the time I got, well, she woke me up, and I got out there, and he was gone. But he was probably looking in our windows while we were asleep, in our doors. He was in the house. All we ended up stealing was the internet router. It's all we stole. But you know what? I believe that God woke up my wife to wake me up, as it could have been worse. We have God's presence, amen? We have God's protection. We don't have to be afraid. Number two, look at Psalms 27 again, verse two. When the wicked, even mine enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. What's it say? They stumbled and fell. Wow. They came to get me. They were out to destroy me. But they stumbled and they fell. You think about mighty Goliath, nine foot tall, the mighty Philistine army. But they stumbled and fell just by a little rock. They were thrown by a little shepherd boy that says God can do the impossible. Number two, God can do the impossible. Luke 137 says, for with God nothing shall be impossible. It says there came upon me in that verse. Many times it seems as though everything is coming upon me. Our enemies from this side and that side and from the side, we're all surrounded. What does it say? They stumbled and fell. Seems like an impossible situation, but God can do the impossible. I think about 2 Kings chapter number 19 when Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, made threatens against Judah and King Hezekiah. Hezekiah goes to the prophet Isaiah. What do we do? What are we going to do? Isaiah says, it's, it's okay. God's going to take care of us. You know, just trust in God. And it tells us in 2 Kings 19, 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and a hundred fourscore and five thousand and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. 185,000 dead. Where are you at now, Sennacherib? Where are you at, king of the Assyrians? Thinking you can conquer everything. But I serve a mighty God who can do the impossible. Have we learned that? Lessons of life learned from the, from the Lord. Number one. God is the reason I don't have to fear. Number two, God can do the impossible. Have you ever thought, God can't do that? God can't save that person. He's got tattoos and earrings and, and he'll never darken the door of a church. Have you ever thought that? I have. But you know what? God can do it. 
Well, we got this building project we need to do. We need a piece of land, Lord. What are we going to do? I thought, how in the world are we going to get? It's too expensive, too hard. God can do it. God can do the impossible. I sat down with the lady who wanted to sell us the piece of property. And I thought to myself, should I ask her for a discount? Should I negotiate? What should we do? So I just prayed. and I said, dear Lord, you show me what to do. Before I could say anything, she said, is it okay with you if we lower the price by another $25,000? Another $25,000? She had already loaded by $50,000. She said, if we, can we lower it by another twenty five? I said, excuse me, ma'am. I, I, I'm old, but I, I'm not that old. But uh, I said, can you say that again? We serve a great God. Amen. Amen. We have a supporting church in Hunt Valley, Maryland, which is just north of Baltimore. And they, had, they actually had two pieces of property. They, they were in one, and then they had another piece of property, but they couldn't move it there to build a building. They were going to sell the one they were in because the, the county, I don't, I don't remember all of it, but the county said they could not build a church on that property. For, for like eight years, it was in court. They spent over $1.3 million in court fees and legal fees. And the pastor said, I thought to myself, good night. What have we done? Well, the, the beautiful good news is that they got permission to build their church there, and they've got over $1.3 million all returned to them. Amen. God can do the impossible. Amen? Amen? We serve a great God. Let us not forget that. He, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Number three, God is the only one that I need to seek. Could I say today that I have learned the value of seeking God? How can we say I've learned that if I don't seek God, if I don't go to the Lord, if I don't fellowship with God, I'm a mess. Amen? How can I live right? How can I be right? How can I stay on the right path? I need God's help. Look what the Bible says in verse number four. As David says, one thing if I desire the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need to be in your presence. Lord, I need your help. Turn the phone off, amen? Get alone with God and understand the importance of it. Seek means to search out, to strive after, to follow, to pursue. We need to learn what it means to get alone with God, to fast and pray and say, God, I'm pouring my heart out to you. David says here, as he goes on in verses uh, 7, When I cry, hear, Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said, unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. You know, we're, we're so busy, are we not? We got everything going on. Our to-do list is this big. And God is at the bottom of the page. I got everything going on. You know, God doesn't want your money. God doesn't want your, your apathy. Well, I'll just, you know, go to church once a month or twice a year for Christmas and Easter. He wants you. Does he have all of you? Could we understand today that we must seek the Lord. We must time, spend time with Him. Have I learned, have you and I learned this importance? If not, we haven't learned. If not, we still need to learn. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me, and ye shall search for me with all your hearts. Isaiah 55, 6, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call ye upon the, Him while He is near. Can I ask you today, have the situations in life caused you to go farther away from God or closer to God? That's it. Either we're going to sing, draw me nearer, nearer, Lord. Or we get that anger in our heart. Or we get that pride in our heart. We get that bitterness. And we begin to point our finger at God and say, God, why? And say, instead of saying, God, deliver me, we should say, God, develop me. You are the potter, Lord, and I am the clay. God, you make me who you want me to be because you are all-knowing and you are all-powerful. And without you, I am nothing. May we humble ourselves and get down on our knees before our God, bowing our heads and bowing our hearts and say, God, I need you. 
May we learn that. Psalms 100, I'm sorry, uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's what we need. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. People say to me all the time, Brother Dacre, we don't have a lot of men, we don't have any money to give to you. All we can do is pray for you. Well, what's the greatest thing we can pray for you? I say, here it is. That every missionary walks with God. That every missionary seeks the Lord. That every missionary has a heart for the things of God. It's easy as a missionary to get busy and neglect our time with God and neglect our walk with God. I've learned I can't neglect my walk with God. Amen? If not, everything else is wrong. Number four, look in verse 13. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Can I just stop for a moment and say, God is good. I'm breathing today, so God is good. Amen? If you have breath, it comes from God. It all comes from the Lord's. Psalms 42 and verse 5 says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why are you cast down today? Why the look of gloom? Amen? Oh, woe, woe is me. Let me sit down a while, I'll tell you about my problems. Well, it'll take a while. This problem, this problem, this, the list goes on. Hey, I've been there. I've been there before and saying, boy, my life is terrible. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. You know my dad. All of you know my dad. He used to always say when we come to church, how many would rather be in jail tonight? How many would rather be in a hospital tonight? Well, thank God you're here. Amen? Grumbling and complaining. Psalms 34 8 says, O taste, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 68, 19 says, I'm sorry, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. What's the song say? Count your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you. See what the Lord has done. Amen. Philippians 2.14 says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. And let me tell you, America is a blessed country. Now, is America going the way it should right now? No. But it's a blessed country. Amen? I mean, we got padded pews. We got air conditioning. We got heat. We don't have anything running around in here. At least I don't think we do. Amen? Did anybody starve for the last week and not have any food? Anybody uh, have a roof over their head, a bed to sleep in last night? We're blessed. And this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. You know, I had people say to me, boy, I, I bet you, you wish you weren't here right now, Brother Deku. I bet you, you wish you were back in Fiji where, where you belong. You know what? That old flesh rears up again and goes, yeah. I want to be here. I don't want to be here this old COVID mess and turn everything up down, upside down. Why did that happen? Oh, the old flesh wants to complain. But what does the Bible say? Do all things without murmurings and disputings. I was in Bible college one time and, and I was standing in line at the cafeteria. You know, we were standing in line. We were all hungry. We go to class. It makes us hungry. We're standing in line and, and I'm standing in line with one of my friends and we're moving up. We're moving up and there's this there's, I, knew, I knew he was. He was a freshman. So he's complaining the entire time we're standing in line about the food. And I'm not very, usually a very controversial, confrontational person. It's not necessarily in my nature. But that day, I had had enough. I turned around and I said, listen, pal, you're new here. Stop complaining. I said, be thankful you got something to eat. I turned around and said, and have a nice day. <laughs> he didn't say another word. You know, I had, a, I had enough of it. I said, stop, just stop already. Can I say it to all of us today? Stop complaining. Be thankful. 
Ask God, say, God, help me to have the attitude of gratitude. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. 2017, I was robbed of thousands of dollars. And I thought to myself, wow. I felt terrible. I felt depressed, discouraged. It made it to the newspapers. The two guys were arrested and put in jail. And I heard that one of them was saved. And I believe he was. I have no other reason to believe he wasn't. But he, he cried to the policeman and said what he did was wrong. But I thought to myself, here I was thinking about me when, praise God, someone else got saved in spite of my sorrow. That's nothing compared to that. Amen? What did Joseph say, even though he was sold as a slave and hated by his brothers? He said, God meant it unto good. Amen? Well, I don't, I don't like all the things, but, but God means it unto good. Number five, quickly, God is always on time. Verse 14 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. But I don't know about you, but I don't like that word. Go to the restaurant, they say, oh, it'll be a one hour and 20 minute wait. What? I said, well, it's going to take us two weeks to fix your car because the parts aren't here. What? You have to wait. You go to the ER, it'll be a four hour wait. What? We don't like that word. What does God say? Wait on the Lord. Can I say this? God's always on time. Amen? When I graduated from Bible college, I wasn't married until I was almost 27 years old. People said, what's wrong with you? I, said, I don't know. I comb my hair. I brush my teeth. I try to look nice. I don't know why I'm not married yet. I go to a church and, and uh, you know, the mom came up to me. She said, I got five daughters. This one, or five daughters. This one plays the piano. Uh, this one can sew. And, and this one is a good. And I'm like, OK, you know, see you later. Have a nice day. And everybody's trying to set me up with every girl under the sun. And I thought, what is wrong with me? It just wasn't God's timing. The Bible tells us, Psalms 40, verse 1, I waited patient for the Lord, and he climbed to me and heard my cry. You know, my kids don't like to wait. Mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> it's not mommy and then wait. It's mommy, 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 mommy. Just one after the other. And they have to say to them, wait, be patient. What is the saying? Good things come to those that what? Wait. Isaiah 25, 9, it says, and, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord, and we have waited for him, and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You know, my, my prayer during that time of being single was, Whoso findeth the wife, findeth the good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Amen? Proverbs 18, 22. So when the Lord did bring my wife into my life, I said, Lord, your way is right. Amen? What do I have to do? Just wait. Amen? Just wait upon the Lord. Let me ask you this in closing. What has God taught you? You're in the school of life. God is the teacher. This is the textbook. Question is, how's your attitude? How's your heart? Have you been turned away from God because of the circumstances of life? It says about his chastening and, uh, that it's for our profit. Trust God today. He's teaching you. He's conforming you to his image to be like Christ. Can I also say, as I said earlier, we're being watched. Yeah. How we're reacting. How we're responding. May God help us to not be afraid. May God help us to see and realize and learn that he can do the impossible. May God help us to see and realize and to learn that he's the only one that we are to seek. Can I say that there is no happiness in anyone else but in the Lord? It's not anywhere else. It's not in a new car or a new house or a new job or winning the championship. It's in Jesus. 
Not only that, could we say today that God's been good to us? I've been there. I've complained. I've had a bad heart towards God. But God has helped me to understand and learn and see, God, you are good. And then God is always on time. I don't know about you, but I'm guilty. I'm guilty of many of things. But I'm guilty of looking in the situations of life in the wrong way. And God has helped me to come back and say, just trust me, son. Just look to me. He hasn't changed. I'm all knowing. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. And he's all present. May these chastisements or circumstances or trials bring us closer to God, not farther away from God. Let's have every head bowed and every eyes closed this morning. Let me say, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you died today, would you go to heaven? We like to take the Bible and show you how to be saved today if you've never been saved. We are sinners on our way to hell. We've all broken God's law. But there is an answer today, and that answer is Jesus. If you're not saved today, let me encourage you to come and get that right. Come and talk to Brother Brian or myself. We know that Community Baptist Church believes the Bible and believes that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But if you're a Christian to this day and you say, Brother Dacre, I know I'm a sinner, or I know I'm saved, I know I'm on my way to heaven, but I know I've allowed the circumstances in life, whatever it is, to overcome me, to discourage me, possibly to defeat me, to where you're just going through the motions of life. But let me challenge you today to look at them differently, to make you a different person. We don't know what God is doing, but we know he is trustworthy. We don't have all the answers, but God does. Let me encourage you this morning, whatever it is in your life, just right now to even pray and say, dear God, help me. As I've looked at these situations in the wrong light, help me to learn. Help me to realize that you are the potter and I am the clay. And that your way is always right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me encourage you to come to the front or pray right there in, in your pew to get things right with the Lord. Thank you.
right, let's go ahead and stand. And now we're going to be dismissed in order of prayer. Don't forget about tonight, 515 men's and ladies prayer meeting, if you can come. And uh, 6 o'clock for our services this evening. Love to see you here this evening. Brother Jerry, will you close us out in a word of prayer? Amen. We'll see you tonight.